Sri Lanka is facing its most serious economic and political crisis in decades, with protests on the streets and officials resigning and being replaced so quickly, we're not sure how long the next finance minister will stick around, because the new appointee lasted just a day. People are struggling to get the basics from food to fuel. Some observers say the poorest may soon face starvation. Years of government mismanagement and corruption compounded by the pandemic has led to this tragedy. Troops patrol the streets outside the parliament in Colombo, locked down after unprecedented street demonstrations against Sri Lanka's president, Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Once wildly popular, his approval ratings have been undermined by people's anger at rampant inflation as well as food, fuel and medicine shortages. The COVID pandemic destroyed Sri Lanka's tourism industry, leading to a lack of foreign exchange for imports. I started a small business recently, but it's very difficult to maintain it. There's no gas, there's no kerosene. And that's why people are protesting in the streets. People are suffering a lot. They've reached the end of their patience. One can't say how the people will behave, what decision they'll take. Gotabaya Rajapaksa is backed by Sri Lanka's powerful Sinhala Buddhist majority, who credit him with ending the 26-year-long civil war in 2009. The protests threaten one of the most powerful Asian political dynasties. In 2020, Mahinda Rajapaksa won elections to become Sri Lanka's Prime Minister, serving under his brother and president, Gotabaya. In 2021, another sibling, Basil, was named Finance Minister, tightening the family's grip on power. Demonstrators accused the president of mismanaging Sri Lanka's most painful downturn since independence from Britain in 1948. The protests began last month but have intensified in the past few days, leading to clashes between protesters and police in some instances. So we are here on behalf of Sri Lanka, the entire nation. So we are facing so many crises. We have no money, people are struggling, people have no food, people have nothing, people have no gas to cook, people have no money to buy food. So this has to stop. Something has to change in this country. So we are here to make that change. And we will fight until this thing changes. Go time has to go home. Rajapaksa revoked a state of emergency after dozens of lawmakers walked out of the ruling coalition. But the troops remain on the streets. There is no certain way out of Sri Lanka's worst political crisis for decades. Joining us from Colombo is Ambaka Sakuna Nathan, human rights advocate and formerly with the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka. Thanks for joining the program. Ambaka, what's happening in Sri Lanka has been a long time coming. I want to start with the economy. Tell us a bit more about how the country ended up where it is today. Yes, as you would have seen right now, we're facing a uh, foreign exchange crisis, uh, due to which we also are facing um, shortage of fuel, gas, um, which is affecting uh, even the large industries, small and medium industries, and just generally um, uh, economic activity. Uh, we are unable to therefore meet our also debt repayments, which means that we can possibly default, which then, uh, as, as someone said, it's worse than even uh, internal armed conflict that we faced. And this has been a long time coming because it is part economic crisis and part political crisis. And the economic crisis brought on by years of mismanagement of also this particular government, despite the fact that it was advised to go to the International Monetary Fund by many experts, refused to do that. And that, I think, was also part of their campaign slogans and what they uh, campaigned to come into power, which is that we will not uh, seek external help. We will safeguard Sri Lanka's sovereignty. They also appointed someone to the central bank, who uh, economic experts clearly say was not qualified to um, 
uh, to make these decisions or to advise the government on these decisions, which is why right now we're at a point where there is an economic meltdown and a political crisis, which is having a severe impact on the socioeconomic um, you know, uh, status of so many people, from school children to daily wage earners, to um, uh, the free trade zone uh, workers who worked in the factories. Um, it is having an adverse impact, I would say, on practically, well, nearly all segments of society. Now, more than 40 members of the legislature left the governing coalition this week. So now you have a minority group running the country. How much is the country, you know, with a legislature, a democracy, as opposed to the Rajapaksa family having most of the power? Well, even now, the problem that we have is many of the people who are part of the governing coalition have said that they have left the governing coalition and that they are going to function in parliament as independents. Uh, but we still don't know whether when it comes to certain issues that they would vote with the government. In which case, probably why, that is why the opposition is also afraid to test it with a no confidence motion. And the opposition is also playing what it seems a waiting game. For instance, yesterday they made a decision that today and tomorrow they would be debating this in parliament, whereas the economic crisis is at a point, you know, it's, it's going to be meltdown. And in a month or two, there will be severe crisis. Um, uh, and all economic activity can possibly shut down. Uh, but yet, I think even the opposition is not putting forward a plan. They are not uh, testing or they're, they're being reluctant to take responsibility. So what is being proposed is also a caretaker government, but that also brings into play uh, many constitutional questions. The question you asked about you know, democracy, the fact is this was in a sense, uh, electoral democracy, I would say, I mean, it is, but it's also electoral authoritarianism in that through elections, mm -hmm. someone is governed, but that regime is authoritarian. And it's also functions uh, um, more, it, it's a family, and it right. functions through dispensing patronage. So, not ideal. What comes next? What comes next is that today in Parliament, uh, one of the cabinet MPs, you would have known that all the MPs uh, resigned, and they reappointed some of them, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Finance, and Minister of Highways. A question that you might ask is why you need a Minister of Highways at this time, and perhaps not, for instance, a Minister of Health. Um, and uh, so the minister uh, mentioned in Parliament that the president sees absolutely no reason to resign. Uh, the protests, as you would have seen, are calling for his resignation, and the protests are getting larger. The crowd is getting angrier because every day they are faced with more shortages, um, diminishing incomes. For some of them, it's right. complete lack of income and uh, being able to only eat one meal a day. So if we do not see the president stepping down, that does bring us to an impasse because you could possibly impeach the president. But once again, that's a lengthy process, a procedure for which we really do not have time. And while and the president very... and the prime minister, who and it's not a very ideal situation <laughs> that we're facing and something that we'll have to get back to you on over the next few weeks. Um, Ambika Sakunanathan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.